Hello folks, this is the next part of the um, introduction or overview of the NanoBio node, to focusing on the application and technical aspects of the uh, program. And in this uh, short part, we cover the nano, micro, and macro thrusts. Okay, let's get going. I'm Jeffrey Fox. And this is first of the three units. We will do the nano unit. Here we are, nano unit. That's led by Vikram Jadeo. And it's here are the goals of the nano unit. It uh, needs to deliver, actually, it needs to identify and deliver tools that enable one to design engineered nanoparticles. Well, we're going to do engineering health soon. Well, we have to, as part of engineering health, we have to engineer those nanoparticles that are going to whiz around inside you, which have the desired chemical and mechanical properties, so that you can assemble them correctly and interact correctly with biological systems. Okay, so that's that's that. And then we need to work with NNCP, the Purdue activity, which is doing all of NanoHub. And nano manufacturing, which is apply, which is building tools for nanotechnology manufacturing. And here we note that viruses, which otherwise have a bad name, are sort of um, nature's um, nanomaterial. And um, one can uh, try to understand how they're built, how they're assembled from components, and how they interact with cells. So obviously, Viruses cause us a lot of trouble. And then we actually try to build virus-like particles, uh, which will guide the design of other synthetic uh, nanoparticles. Well, when I say we, I mean that's this team here led by Vikram Judea. All right, so here are the five tools, which at this moment, uh, January 2020, have been deployed uh, by this uh, nano group. Uh, we have the assembly lab, the electrostatic lab, the shape lab, uh, the simulation of ions just running around in nano confinement, and then we have uh, the binding simulator, which uh, tells you how many receptors are bound uh, and to interact with the surface. And here we're going to have the binary nanoparticle lattice and the virus souffle, which will be. Uh, which are being thought about at this moment and will be uh, probably one of the next two to be delivered. So let's look at uh, why we're doing this, which is a little more detail than what I, we've said already. Um, we want to look at the shape of particles. And part of that is that we want to do nanomedicine. We want to engineer personalized nanomedicine for the right um, characteristics of the problem to be solved. If you have a rod shape, it has a different characteristics to a disc shape. And um, rods uh, whiz along better and they diffuse with higher efficiency, uh, but discs are more specific. Uh, we want to uh, change the shape of particles so they pack well and assemble into interesting shapes. So here we have uh, spheres and rods which can get packed in different ways. So that's one aspect of this project. Um, and then we want to um, actually conquer nature's nanoparticles, the viruses, and enable the drug development. Um, notice here is an example of um, virus infection in the liver, uh, 257 million infected. That's from a World Health Organization fact sheet. And we are drugs are being developed, uh, which interrupt the, uh, the assembly. And um, you need a single, you need to assemble a 90 and 120 subunit structures. And you need to understand how they assemble, uh, the mechanisms that lead to heterogeneous assembly, and uh, how the elasticity uh, allows you to wiggle in in parts you would not otherwise be able to wiggle in if you have a more um, monolithic design. Here is a, a one aspect which has been done for the ions in nano um, confinement, we have found that uh, this uh, large uh, 
classic HP high performance computing simulation using the so called message passing interface can get a speed up of 10 to the fifth. That's a pretty good speed up if you just teach a neural net um, what it's um, about the results of the simulation. So here are three different densities contact density, peak density, and center density. And um, the, you have here the um, the machine learning version of it, and then the molecular dynamics version of it. You train on one sample and test on another. You can see these uh, lines are pretty wi much y equals x, showing that the <coughs> trained, once you train a neural net, it does a pretty good job of um, predicting things. This is a very important general characteristic. We expect to extend this to other, other um, uh, problems and actually make an offering of this so that other people can use these ideas. Notice this is particularly interesting for education because um, he, he, with education, like on NanoHub, you're running the same job many times. And so you can get a huge, these speed ups are very important. If you're doing a custom piece of research, you run a job two or three times, then it will cost more to train the neural net than you will gain from using it. If you're using it lots and lots of times on the hand, then that's not true. All right, now we come on to the micro unit. This is between nano and cellular. It goes into the cellular and back points down into the nano. Here's James Glazier and Andy Samoji. And um, this slide describes an essential process for the nanobio um, activity. We have a nanoparticle, here's one and here's some more. Uh, these have ligands, and those ligands are presented by the nanoparticle to the cell. And they, are, if you like, functionalize the nanoparticle, because the ligands invoke functions in the cell. Um, the, the ligands bind to the surface of the cell in more or less uh, different fashions. And it's the goal of the simulation to reproduce that uh, um, whole effect. Uh, we capture this with this thing called SBML, Systems Biology Markup Language. This allows us to take detailed simulations and abstract them for la larger scale simulations. We call that going from the micro scale. At the micro scale, ligands are represented maybe by up to 30 individual particles. And they're done, a detailed simulation is done at both the nanoparticle and the ligands and the cell. And of course, you because it's all done in detail, you can do a relatively small problem. After you've got that problem, you abstract it and uh, do, represent the ligands in a coarser grain fashion, even as a fluid. And then you present that to the um, um, to the cell. And then you can do these multicellular simulations and find out about ligands acting in a virtual tissue environment. Um, so, and, and the, we're, we're trying to simulate the actual signaling between the nanoparticle and the cell, and how the very changes in, in how you might do this in the real world, the density is of the, how many nanoparticles there are, how many ligands there are, and how that affects the cell response, which you can then calculate. And I say, we have a mixture of two simulations captured here, the detailed simulation, the micro level, and then the meso level or macro level, which follow that um, on the details of what we've done here. Thank you. Um, there are various things, uh, technologies it's using. Um, just in time compiled model description. Uh, have things done interactively using uh, GPUs to do the rendering. That's the server side hardware rendering. Uh, by the way, this this application, as well as um, the later one for universal scientific simulation, both use GPUs on the node. We are use they're using here finite element meshes, a classic um, numerical approach, and um, we will have an interaction of the particles with the fluid with the cells defined as sometimes with fluids involved in their definition. And here's some mathematics which are not meant to be able to understand. 
And uh, here are some quite interesting structures here of things lying in a fluid. And, um, and here you have to worry about all the interacting particles. This is a classic particle dynamics problems. Complicated by the fact that you have to abstract across scale. The cells are rep can be re they, cells can be represented in different ways depending on the uh, detail you want to um, uh, exp expose. And uh, in in uh, glacial submerges uh, activities, they have at least one project, Mechanica, which does everything in a very uh, rigorous fashion, thinking of the cells as objects which can. Uh, to form and interact with each other with explicit surfaces and volumes. The, uh, uh, when you go to simulations involving millions of cells, you'll need a less uh, detailed model for a cell. Um, so here we have, we come back to this interactions between scales using SBML. So the nano gives you um, um, ligand density and binding energy and diffusion constants. And then for the macro, gives you the network. Um, then you simulate the response of the nanoparticles and the ligands binding to the cell with a particular network. And then you need to represent the signaling network in response to the activation. And then we have us so get from this a fully parameterized SBML file that can be used in a macro simulation. Um, so here we have um, a classic picture of using uh, particles and fluids together, um, which is a pretty well-known technique. In, uh, and here used to do cells, typically it's used to do uh, uh, things like um, plasma physics and things like that, electrons and in, uh, in, a, in a potential. Um, and um, here it's used to do the, the cellular simulation. All right, now we have a description of a, of a very successful unit, the macro unit, which has produced some spectacular uh, applications, which are very visually appealing because they show the progression of cancer and things like that. This is led by Paul Macklin uh, and in the Intelligent Systems Engineering Department. So here we can just watch this for a little bit. We have here on the top right an actual simulation. Each of those little dots is an agent. The, uh, both the Glacier and Macklin groups use agent-based simulations a lot. Not always, sometimes when you, agents are used when you want to take in part of the problem and, and sort of describe its characteristics in a macroscopic fashion. And um, so it's obviously appropriate for the macro unit. And you don't want to go into detail. So you just say this particular entity, and when prodded in this way does that, and, and when put in a different way, does some different things. So that's a agents and entities which are given inputs, do things. And what you code up is this uh, map between inputs and outputs. Um, and here we, this is a nanotherapy simulation. And um, he, well, it's up to here, there's eight, nine, 19, 20 days is total. And you, you can um, take the properties from the nano, the single, the nanoparticle properties from nano, the single cell properties from micro, and then the single cell nanoparticle response when they interact. And then you predict the distribution of the nanoparticles across the system and the response of the multicellular system. Paul Macklin has some very important uh, software projects. Look, we live in these. 17 guitar with one of these federated guitars we mentioned. And as PhysiCell is his agent based uh, simulator, which is developed in a very sophisticated fashion. And then we have to have diffusion across the different substrates for the basic biology. Um, a last slide on the macro unit. Uh, they've uh, developed this very important tool, XML to Jupiter that allows you to use the Jupyter interface to NanoHub. That's a Jupyter notebook, a very famous uh, piece of Python technology. And it allows you to specify in XML the GUI you want, and you will automatically generate that GUI. 
uh, for command line simulators. And uh, then you can use XML to Jupyter to deploy the Jupyter Notebook and the Nano Hub, which is a set here thought of as a cloud backend. And so this allows you to make it somewhat easier to make Nano Hub apps and allow scientists to focus on science, not on the details of Jupyter, which is pretty, very powerful, but pretty tricky. Uh, Paul and the, actually all the Nano Hub participants have many partic many collaborators. Paul is, um, works with San Diego with a very strong European collaboration. He has an educational, uh, several, several educational activities. And um, <coughs> he has um, got actually a big effort in educational workforce. He is very well uh, liked by the students in his classes because he's a very committed teacher. And he also uses these um, simulators in his teaching. Um, or both um, all the classes, all the units, these three units, nano, micro, and macro, use uh, the nano hub tools in their classes. All right, so that's the um, end of this uh, unit B of the uh, overview. And um, the next, next unit will describe um, <coughs> the engineering health. And our cosmic way we put everything together and motivate well, why we're doing what we're doing.